Music and Tuna Real Talk. And we are on. You just watched the latest episode of Wicked Tuna. Now it's time for Wicked Tuna Real Talk, the weekly web show where your favorite bluefin tuna captains, and well, sometimes your not so favorite captains as well, are here in the hot seat to give us their take on the latest episode. My name is Mike Salk. I will be your host once again. And joining us this week are Captain TJ Ott of the Hot Tuna, Captain Dave Carrero of FishingVesselTuna.com, and Tyler McLaughlin, the captain of the Pinwheel. Welcome to the show, guys. On this new episode, we saw Doccom catch the biggest fish of the season, at least so far. We saw TJ's younger brother, Mike, manage to avoid getting fired from the Hot Tuna crew. <laughs> we will uh, we'll delve into that. He found his place on the team, thankfully. Uh, but let's start here. This week, Dave, you came back pretty hot. You just started, you know, scoring fish. So what is it? Were you motivated? Did that kind of lock you in? You'd had so much frustration the week before. Did you just feel released to go out there and catch fish? No, I thank him for me catching those two fish. Hmm. Just that little bit of frustration. Just that there's nothing more that I wanted to do right now than go out and catch fish and make a statement. And we did. You don't strike me as a guy who has a problem focusing. I mean, you're not like a uh, ADD guy all over the place from here to there. I mean, you're a pretty focused guy generally. So this is just what laser pinpoint. Now I have a task and this is what I'm going to go after. Exactly. Exactly. He poked the hive and now we're ready to go. Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. Well, Tyler, I don't know if it looked the same for you. I mean, while Dave kind of, you know, was able to shore up his focus, you didn't have your best week. I mean, you catch a fish, but, you know, what, how were you feeling in the aftermath of what had happened? Did we get under your skin? Not really. I mean, I'm just, you caught some fish, you know, coming up to my spot that I found. You know, you had to come up there. You've never caught a fish up there before in your boat. You know, I've been fishing Maine for years, and it just hurt me that you come up to the bottom, then I'm fishing. I got to look out my window and see you catch a 600 pounder. Very drove me Victory. nuts. Drove me nuts. Who's the better fisherman of these two guys? Oh. Make sure you make it the right answer. Uh, yeah, come on. Come on. There's a lot of pressure. Very, no, no, very no, 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 no. Good in different Don't weasel areas. out of this. Tell me who's the no, better that's, fisherman. That's good, what he just said. I, I think they're both great fishermen. Um, they've both fished up and down the coast. They both are, are good in certain areas. You know, some, Dave is better in some spots and Tyler is better in others. So I, I, I mean, Dave's got much more experience. I will give him that. But at the same time, Tyler's proven himself, so. Where, where, where are their strengths? Where do you, where, 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 where is I think Dave, Dave like on, is in South Jeffries and close to Gloucester and some of those areas, Dave, you know, and Sandro, they're phenomenal. Lights they're out. very hard to beat. But Tyler knows Maine. He's fished in Maine quite a bit. He's fished down, you know, off the Carolinas and stuff. So he's a little more well-rounded in that area. So you think it's more location-based as opposed totally, to yes. different things you guys are able to do? Well, yeah, well, because certain areas you fish, fish differently than you would anywhere else. If I told you, you know, if you approach a spot 200 miles away from where we fish with the same methods we do in that not area, work. you're not going to put together. You're, you're going to watch other guys go off around you. Hmm. I'll so, be biting my nails a lot more if I'm anchored up next to the black boat on Stellwagen versus if I'm anchored up next to him in Maine. Exactly. If I'm anchored up next to him in Maine, I'm thinking I'm LeBron James. Because you know what you're doing there. No, yep. I'm doing And what confident. is that? Is it tides and currents are different? Everything. Bait is totally. different? Tide, What's different? What Everything. Bait? What time of the day? Depth, night depth bite? of water. Bites when they it's, come through. You got an hour? There's a lot of tuna heroes in our industry that think they're the best of the best. Right. And if you took them out of their little niche where they fish and put Game them... over. They'd watch everyone, they'd take pictures, and they wouldn't have anything to write on Facebook how great they were. That's what <laughs> makes the three of them. I mean, these two are two phenomenal captains. They go anywhere and catch fish. That was always my goal as a fisherman, to be able to hang in there in every spot. Yep. And, and, you know, maybe not be the best in one particular area, but say, hey, I can go there and compete. Tyler, for you, where do you draw the line? When are you in someone's head and getting under their skin in a positive way, and when are you annoying people in the fleet? How do you, how do you walk that line? I don't, I don't. I just kind of roll with the day and see how much trouble I can get myself into on that day. So really, it's never ending for me. I mean, I kind of don't check and balance what I'm doing. I mean, I'm like my own boss out there on a tuna boat. So I mean, I really don't have anyone to keep me in check. Unfortunately, I'm on captains. the receiving end. All right, is that a good thing that Tyler's his own boss? No, I don't know. I, I almost <laughs> cracked out laughing when he said that. I was like, holy moly. Well, I have moly. him tell him, you know, what's right, what's wrong. You know, you kind of lose perspective of what's exactly appropriate and what's exactly allowed when you're out there in the middle of the ocean with nothing going on. You kind of go crazy, I think. It's funny. There are times where I feel like this is like a therapy session for Tyler as we're sort of like working out his issues along the way in real talk afterwards. Do we see a trend here? <laughs> we, yeah, I, I know. So I, maybe we need new doctors. I've had him laid out on the leather couch a bunch of times. I didn't, it didn't help him. <laughs> You know, <laughs> You're I, you have no crying. idea how many times I tried to get through it all. Do you think you guys could be friends, uh, Dave? Uh, could he, you and Tyler he, become friends? Hey, uh, I totally respect him as a fisherman. I would like to respect him as a person. If I could just see him grow up 
and be a parallel to Sandro's mentality? Yes, I think so. What would it look like if these two guys were on the same boat? A lot of Never, dentures. ever work. Just couldn't happen. Just personality no. conflict? No, man. Odd couple. Extreme. All right, well, we're getting to see our own little odd couple drama play out on the Hot Tuna this oh, year. Yeah. TJ, you got your brother on there, and he was struggling. I mean, you guys had that shark on the line, and he, he looked like he wasn't exactly hopped to it. So yeah. how has it been? What, what were the early goings like with Mike? You know, he, he came out like a zombie, uh, way slower than we expected him to. Um, and I, I think I was a little hard on him at times, for sure. I know Michael knows what's going on. And, and I don't want to yell at him because I try and keep the boat calm. If you get everyone kind of nervous and on edge, things are going to go wrong. And, and I, I don't like to do that. But at times, I, I had to raise my voice just because I didn't know what the hell he was doing. <laughs> I thought he'd know better than throw the anchor rope on the line. Yeah, I mean, Come just on. stuff like that, you know. Those are rookie, rookie mistakes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you ha there's so many things that could go wrong throughout a battle, you know, where you could possibly lose a fish. Something like that is unnecessary. And, it's Bush League. Would you really fire your brother? What would your yeah, mom yeah, say? I like probably that? would. I, yeah, my mother wouldn't be too happy. <laughs> uh, if I had to, yeah. I mean, I, my father would fire me. Right. You know, that's why they say never get into business with family, man. <laughs> uh, this is a perfect well, example. You keep like, adding family to your business. <laughs> I know, and, and you know, listen. At the end of the day, it's it's going to work out, but. There's been some major bumps in the road. I'll come around. Well, Dave, we've seen you fire. I mean, we know you fire Paul. And, yeah, he's cold-blooded. Well, that I know. I mean, we don't, <laughs> we don't need to do the show to cold figure out ice. that Dave is cold-blooded. But what is that? I mean, you and Paul were close. You yeah, fished I, together for a long, long time. How was that moment where you finally say, I, I got to make a decision here and I got to do it? I mean, it's, it was an, it's an easier decision for me to make than it is for him. You know, he's got family. Paul is somewhat family. We're close friends. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a business move. You know, if you're not playing well, you know, it's my decision, it's time to move on. I gotta find someone that's gonna bring harmony to the tuna.com. And Paul was basically put, putting us in a negative direction. Mm -hmm. Something that had to be done, unfortunately. Well, Mike ended up uh, redeeming himself. And that's sort of a, yeah. a great part of this episode today is that maybe he was, he, he was struggling. So is that, did you know that he, I mean, obviously you know that he's got that in yeah. him. Yeah, I mean, listen, I gotta give him credit. I wouldn't wanna be down in that engine room for three hours manning the hydraulic system while it was really hot that day. It was like 85 degrees out. The engine room is, you know, the engine's 170 degrees. So uh, he definitely earned his keep, and I give him a lot of credit. You know, he, he, he definitely helped us with that fish. Well, how did Mike feel after that? I mean, it seemed like he was pretty down. I mean, he, he looked a little worried he was, was going to lose the game. He's a big baby. Yeah, <laughs> he's fine. Big jelly is man. he? Yeah, he's a big bear, you know? He's, he's, <laughs> he comes across <laughs> as mean and nasty, but he's a nice guy. But after, how did he feel? I mean, was he, did he, did he, I think was he it felt a redemption? redemption? Yeah, I bought him a shot. Oh. I was proud of him, you know? That fish was a real hair puller, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think we were on it for three and a half hours, and then I ended up fighting it for quite a while, and, <laughs> which I don't really care to do much anymore. <laughs> you know, Michael was a major part of that catch. I'm proud of him. Tyler, we also got to see you kind of flipping out in this episode. I mean, towards the end, you know, Dave catches a fish, and it really got under your skin. Is this just the leftover from the confrontation at the docks? Is, are you having trouble controlling your emotions and staying even out there? What happened? Well, it was tough for me because I'm up here on a spot all alone with no other boats, and I start to see boats that I'm competing against showing up. I'm not too happy when I see them catch a fish on a spot I found. Mm -hmm. So it really ticked me off good. And yeah, he's starting to get under my skin a little bit, but I'm still focused. I know what I got to do. I, I know see, how to catch tuna. I see Dave smiling. As soon as I threw the harpoon, hit that fish, one thing popped into my mind, that nice orange polyball. Uh -huh. I will tell you what, though. You know what? It definitely seems that I'm your biggest competition. There's no doubt yeah, about that. No, there's no doubt about well, it. And that's the funny part is while you were so worried about Tyler and you guys are so worried about your, each other, TJ ends up kind of storming into the lead. Did you lose track of what was going on around you? That's right. He, you know, if he's in the lead, that's all right, as long as I'm catching up to him. That's really? good. Really? Yeah. So you're willing right to now, right that's now. how That's how serious you're taking this rivalry is that you're willing yeah, to I only see one of, I see black when I look. I hope that's to keep I it up all season. Yeah, this seems perfect for you. Yeah, it's great, man. I'm Look, totally out of the loop of, of baby stuff, you know? They, they can go at it and I can just go fishing. <laughs> so what's more important to you this year, Tyler? Is it, is it winning or is it beating Dave? It's taking back the title. I think is I'm it? The, I think I'm the best fisherman amongst these captains and I want to catch the most fish. Hmm. That's it, what it's about. It, you know, I definitely want to beat that's, the black That's right. I think we all think the same way. I mean, we all want to catch the most fish. We all want to win. I mean, you catch the most fish, you win, you're going to make the most money, most likely. Yeah, I want to catch a few for sure. But I, if, if one of these guys gets one next to me, I'm not going to punch my helm chair. And I'm not going to be mad at my helm chair. It did nothing wrong to me. 
All right, hey guys, it's good to have you in once again for Wicked Tuna Real Talk. A big thank you to all three of these guys, Captain TJ Ott, Captain Dave Carrera sitting in the middle, Captain Tyler McLaughlin. Thanks for stopping by and sharing all of your thoughts. Wicked Tuna Real Talk is going to be back again next week right after the new episode of Wicked Tuna on National Geographic Channel. Sunday at 9 o'clock, so bookmark this page right now, natgeotv.com slash real talk and come join us to get a daily wicked tuna update like us on facebook or follow us on twitter tj is going to be back again next week we'll also have captain dave marciano the hard merchandise and captain paul ebert of the kellyanne one of them is going to be facing one of the most stressful weeks of their fishing career we'll be asking them all about it on the next show we'll see you next time on wicked tuna real talk